5 Medications That Doctors Avoid Taking Today we're going to talk about medications that can be prescribed, but that doctors avoid taking for long periods. I'll present 5 medications that, in my opinion, should be avoided for long-term use. Taking medications over a long period usually indicates a chronic problem, and addressing only the symptoms without tackling the underlying cause may not be the best approach. While temporary symptom relief is important for reducing stress and improving quality of life, prolonged medication use without treating the root of the problem can be concerning. So, I'd like to discuss five types of medications that doctors avoid taking for long periods. Let's get started. 1. Painkillers, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs. First on the list are painkillers, known as NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which are the most widely used medications globally. Examples include Loxonin, Loxoprofen, Voltaren, Diclofenac, and Ibuprofen, with some available over-the-counter. However, using NSAIDs is associated with several risks, such as heart complications, Data from large studies show that prolonged use of these medications can increase the risk of heart failure by about 20%. The higher the dose and duration of use, the greater the risk. Additionally, many of these medications cause gastrointestinal damage, including ulcers and bleeding in the digestive tract. In more severe cases, stomach or intestinal perforations may occur. Most cases of bleeding ulcers are caused by prolonged NSAID use, Another problem with long-term NSAID use is its impact on the kidneys. These medications can reduce kidney function, leading to issues like fluid retention and swelling. Although not all users experience visible swelling, an estimated 5% of people show noticeable signs of swelling. Therefore, it's important to limit the use of these medications and try to address the root cause of pain, such as knee or back problems, rather than relying on painkillers long-term. In addition to cardiac, gastrointestinal and kidney risks, prolonged NSAID use can also be associated with other side effects like dizziness, headaches and allergies. Some people may develop severe allergic reactions to these medications with symptoms such as skin rashes, difficulty breathing and facial swelling. It's important to note that while NSAIDs can be effective in relieving pain and inflammation, they don't treat the underlying cause of the problem. Thus, seeking medical advice to identify and properly treat the source of pain is crucial, instead of solely relying on medications to control the symptoms. Safer and more natural alternatives for pain relief include relaxation techniques, low-impact exercises, physical therapy, and acupuncture. Lifestyle changes such as maintaining proper posture, engaging in regular physical activity, and keeping a healthy weight can also help prevent and alleviate chronic pain. In cases of acute pain or when NSAIDs are necessary, it's essential to follow medical advice and the instructions on the package, respecting the recommended doses and treatment duration. Indiscriminate and prolonged use of these medications can pose serious health risks, so it's crucial to be aware of potential side effects and seek safer alternatives whenever possible. 2. Statins, cholesterol-lowering medications. The second medication I would avoid taking long-term is statins used to lower cholesterol levels. Statins are often prescribed to reduce the risk of heart disease. Discovered by a Japanese scientist, Dr. Akira Endo, statins are considered one of the greatest discoveries in medicine. They can reduce the risk of heart disease by 30% to 40% according to some studies. However, it's important to understand how this data is interpreted. In a large study on statins, about 3% of participants who did not take the medication had heart attacks, while this number dropped to 2% among those who did take statins. This represents a relative reduction of 30%, but in absolute terms it's only a 1% reduction. This means that, to prevent one heart attack in one person, many others must take the medication without direct benefits. Furthermore, statins can cause side effects such as muscle damage, rhabdomyolysis, and mitochondrial dysfunction, in addition to increasing the risk of hemorrhagic stroke. 
While it's important for people who have already had a heart attack to continue taking statins, for those with only high cholesterol, lifestyle changes may be a healthier and more effective alternative. Personally, I would avoid prolonged statin use if high cholesterol was the only issue without other cardiac complications. Another potential side effect of statins is an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Studies suggest that prolonged statin use may raise the risk of developing diabetes by up to 50%. This risk is particularly concerning as diabetes is a significant risk factor for heart disease and other health complications. Additionally, statins can affect cognitive function in some people. Some users report memory problems, confusion and difficulty concentrating during prolonged use of these medications. While these side effects are generally reversible after stopping treatment, they can be bothersome and affect the quality of life. It's important to note that statins may be necessary and beneficial for people at high risk of heart disease, especially those with a history of heart attacks or other serious cardiovascular issues. However, for individuals with high cholesterol as the only risk factor, it's crucial to consider alternative approaches before resorting to long-term statin use. Lifestyle changes such as adopting a healthy diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains and healthy fats, along with regular exercise, can be effective measures to lower cholesterol and improve heart health. Additionally, stress management, maintaining a healthy weight and avoiding tobacco are important factors in preventing heart disease. Before starting or stopping state in use, it's crucial to consult a doctor to assess individual risks and benefits. Every person has unique health needs and conditions, and a healthcare professional can guide the best approach to managing cholesterol and reducing the risk of heart disease. 3. Sleep Medications Zolpidem Hypnotics The third medication I would avoid long-term is sleep medications such as Zolpidem, known commercially as Stilnox or Ambien. These medications are frequently prescribed to treat insomnia and are known for their fast action and short duration of effect. However, prolonged use of Zolpidem is associated with several risks, such as falls, dizziness, daytime drowsiness, and even abnormal behaviors like nonsensical conversations or forgetting events. In elderly patients, the risk of falls increases significantly and long-term use can lead to dependence. Moreover, when the medication is abruptly discontinued, patients may experience rebound insomnia or withdrawal symptoms. Many people develop an exaggerated fear of not being able to sleep, which increases anxiety and worsens insomnia. Instead of relying on sleep medications, it is more effective to adopt behavioral changes and sleep hygiene practices. This includes sleeping only when feeling sleepy, avoiding the use of electronic devices in bed, and keeping a consistent wake-up time, even if you've had little sleep the night before. Meditation, reading, and other relaxing activities before bed can also help. Besides the mentioned risks, prolonged use of sleep medications can affect sleep quality. Although these medications may help induce sleep, they can alter the natural sleep architecture, reducing the time spent in deeper and more restorative sleep stages such as REM sleep. This can lead to a feeling of unrefreshing sleep, even after a full night of rest. Another concern with prolonged use of sleep medications is the risk of drug interactions. Many of these medications are metabolized by the liver and may interact with other drugs, alcohol, and even some foods. These interactions can increase the side effects and risks associated with the use of these medications. It's important to emphasize that insomnia may be a symptom of underlying mental health issues such as anxiety and depression. In such cases, treating the underlying condition may be more effective than relying on long-term sleep medications. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy CBT, is an effective non-pharmacological approach to treating insomnia, helping patients identify and modify thoughts and behaviors that contribute to sleep problems. Other strategies for improving sleep quality include creating a comfortable and quiet sleep environment, engaging in regular physical activity, avoiding intense exercise close to bedtime, limiting caffeine and alcohol consumption, especially at night, 
and managing stress through relaxation techniques such as deep breathing and yoga. In cases of chronic or severe insomnia, it's crucial to seek medical guidance to evaluate the underlying causes and determine the best course of treatment. While sleep medications may be necessary in some cases, it's important to weigh the risks and benefits of long-term use and explore safer and more sustainable alternatives whenever possible. 4. Diabetes Medications – SGLT2 Inhibitors The fourth type of medication I would avoid long-term is SGLT2 inhibitors used in the treatment of type 2 diabetes. These medications block the reabsorption of glucose by the kidneys, causing excess glucose to be eliminated through urine. This helps lower blood glucose levels, but also increases the risk of urinary and genital infections, especially in women. Additionally, excessive glucose loss can lead to weakness, fatigue and dehydration. While these medications may benefit patients with diabetes and heart or kidney disease, it's important to try controlling diabetes through diet and exercise before relying on long-term medications. Another potentially serious side effect of SGLT2 inhibitors is an increased risk of diabetic ketoacidosis, a condition that occurs when the body produces high levels of ketones due to a lack of insulin. Although more common in patients with type 1 diabetes, diabetic ketoacidosis can also occur in type 2 diabetes patients using SGLT2 inhibitors. Symptoms include nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, confusion, and shortness of breath. If left untreated, diabetic ketoacidosis can lead to coma or even death. Moreover, SGLT2 inhibitors may increase the risk of amputations of toes or legs. This risk is particularly high in patients with peripheral artery disease or diabetic neuropathy. It's crucial for patients using these medications to carefully monitor their feet and legs and immediately report any wounds, ulcers, or infections to their doctor. It's important to emphasize that for many patients with type 2 diabetes, lifestyle changes like adopting a healthy diet, exercising regularly, and maintaining a healthy weight can be sufficient to control blood glucose levels. Even modest weight loss can significantly improve insulin sensitivity and reduce the need for medications. When lifestyle changes aren't enough to control diabetes, other medications like metformin may be considered before turning to SGLT2 inhibitors. Metformin is typically the first-line medication for treating type 2 diabetes as it is effective, safe and well-tolerated by most patients. If SGLT2 inhibitors are necessary, it's crucial that patients be closely monitored for any side effects or complications. Patients should be advised to drink enough fluids to avoid dehydration and to immediately report any symptoms of urinary or genital infections, diabetic ketoacidosis, or foot and leg problems to their doctor. 5. Proton Pump Inhibitors PPI Stomach Acid Reducers The fifth and final medication I would avoid long-term is Proton Pump Inhibitors PPIs, such as omeprazole, which are commonly prescribed to treat acid reflux and stomach ulcers. These medications reduce the production of stomach acid, which can relieve reflux symptoms and promote the healing of ulcers. However, prolonged PPI use is associated with several risks, including vitamin B12 deficiency, poor absorption of magnesium, calcium and iron, increased risk of pneumonia, osteoporosis, and even gastric cancer. Additionally, these medications can weaken the stomach's natural defenses, allowing bacteria and other pathogens to enter the digestive tract. Interestingly, studies show that regularly drinking water can provide temporary relief from acid reflux symptoms, similar to medication use. Therefore, instead of relying on PPIs long-term, it's better to address the underlying cause of reflux, such as being overweight or having poor dietary habits. For many people, lifestyle changes like losing weight and improving diet can be just as effective as medication in controlling reflux. Another concern with prolonged PPI use is the risk of drug interactions. These medications can interfere with the absorption and effectiveness of other medications such as blood thinners, antidepressants, and osteoporosis treatments. This can lead to serious and potentially fatal complications, 
especially in elderly patients or those with multiple health conditions. Additionally, studies suggest that long-term PPI use may increase the risk of infection with Clostridium difficile, a bacterium that causes severe and potentially fatal diarrhea. This occurs because PPIs alter the natural balance of bacteria in the digestive tract, creating a more favorable environment for harmful bacteria to grow. It's important to note that while PPIs may be necessary for treating certain conditions, such as stomach ulcers or erosive esophagitis, they should not be used indefinitely without medical supervision. If acid reflux symptoms persist despite lifestyle changes, other treatments like H2 receptor antagonists, for example, famotidine or antacids, can be considered before resorting to PPIs. If PPI use is necessary, it's crucial that patients be closely monitored and that the dose and duration of treatment be minimized. Patients should be advised not to abruptly stop PPI use, as this can lead to a rebound effect of increased stomach acid production, worsening reflux symptoms. Conclusion In summary, it's important to address the underlying causes of health problems rather than simply masking symptoms with long-term medications. While medications may be necessary in some cases, such as for people who have already had a heart attack or are at risk of kidney failure, it's always better to try changing lifestyle habits to improve health. I hope this discussion has been helpful. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and follow the channel for more content like this.